Before we begin today, a couple of housekeeping notes. I apologize for the lack of content over the last month or so. Our weather has been everywhere from 40 and rain to 95 and no clouds, neither of which are very good for shooting trains. Add in that I was sick for a week too. Hopefully the weather is stabilizing and I'll be able to get out more. Also, I'm now on Instagram. You can see the pictures I get along with the video that you see here. You can click the link in the video description below or search for NEIL Railfan, that's Northeastern Illinois Railfan. With that out of the way, on to today's video. Today we're here on the UP Harvard sub, more commonly known as the Metro UP Northwest Line. This is the longest line in the metro system, making a 63-mile trip from Ogilvy Transportation Center in Chicago to Harvard with a branch to McHenry. This line was built by the Illinois and Wisconsin and originally part of the Chicago, St. Paul, and Fond du Lac Railroad. It became the Chicago and Northwestern in 1859 after bankruptcy. In 1865, it merged with the Galena and Chicago Union, notable for being the first railroad built out from Chicago. The line would remain with the Northwestern until that was acquired by Union Pacific in 1995. According to Metro's website, the commuter service on the line was built out gradually and picked up steam, no pun intended, after the Civil War and the Chicago Fire as more people moved outside the city itself. One of the biggest legacies of the Northwestern's commuter service was the cab car in the 1950s that made push-pull operation practical and is still widely used today. It should also be noted that this metro line is not operated by metro itself. It uses metro rolling stock, but is currently operated by Union Pacific under a purchase of service agreement using UP Cruise. One of the first and most obvious things you notice about this line is that it runs left-handed. This is a continuation of practices adopted by the Galena and Chicago Union. According to the Winnetka Historical Society, it was because of convenience. When the Galena and Chicago Union built stations on their main east-west line, they put the station buildings on the north side of the tracks because that's where the people mostly lived. When the line was double-tracked, the second track was placed on the south side. However, the company assumed that most passengers would be traveling inbound and wanted the building on the inbound track. So they ran left-handed and the practice stuck across the Chicago and Northwestern system. While CTC has allowed bi-directional travel on some lines like the Geneva Sub, this line remains in the original configuration. It does not use CTC except in very small pockets at interlockings. According to the rulebook, it has mostly three main tracks with main one only signaled for northbound traffic and main three only signaled for southbound. The middle track is signaled bidirectionally with a controlled block system. The McHenry sub from Crystal Lake to McHenry is dark territory with track warrants. On this day, I had a meeting to attend on the other side of Mount Prospect. Wanting to break up time spent in awful traffic a bit, I decided to head to Arlington Heights first to spend an hour seeing what I could get from the early evening rush. My goal was to make it to Arlington Heights about 5, I just had to hope there was a spot in the municipal short-term parking lot immediately adjacent to the station. We'll be at Evergreen Avenue, milepost 22.39. The station is immediately to our west at milepost 22.5. Not long after I arrived, 631 and 633 are running almost even with each other. 631 slows to allow 633 to clear the station before dropping off passengers. 631, 633, you first at the height. 633 is running express on the middle track. It won't make a stop until Palatine, two stations northwest. In 40 miles and in a little over an hour, it'll reach its destination of Harvard. One terminates here, but continues as a non-revenue train to either Barrington or Crystal Lake, not sure which.
the lone inbound we'll see, 654 pulls into the station as 631 pulls out. Some guy decides to run in front of the train, leading to this lovely horn salute from the engineer. The conductor actually chased him down and threw him off the train after this. I then get a much more friendly horn as it pulls out of the station. That was all in less than 10 minutes. A little over 10 minutes later, we see 635. This is one of three weekday outbound trains that terminates in McHenry. Next up is 639, another express run on the middle track, doing every bit of the 70 mile per hour limit through here. It too is destined for Harvard.
long after us, 67, another train that terminates here and continues non-revenue. As I'm waiting for the next train, I hear the dispatcher advising trains that the line is shut down due to trespassers further east. You be Northeast Dispatcher, Metro 6430. 430. Yeah, what's your current mile plus location number? 12. Alright, uh, RMCC wants traffic stop mile plus 14.67 if you want to find a good spot shorter there to, uh, Hold, they've got uh, trespassers on the track. Try to place a park, trespassers on the track. Uh, I'll just give you a call back, it might be here. Park up. Madison Park. Alright, copy that, just let me know. This means I won't be expecting anything after the next one for a while, which is fine since I have to leave after the next one anyway. And finally, to cap off our hour, we have 641, also destined for McHenry. This is only a taste of the evening rush on Metra. Here in Arlington Heights, peak times are between 5 and 7, with train frequency drastically reduced after 7 p.m. I head on to go to my meeting and discover it's actually a week later. Whoops. Maybe there will be a part 2 to this video if the weather is nice again? Although I try to focus on freight trains due to the variety they provide, Metra is a staple of railroading in Chicago and rush hours are definitely something to behold. In the future, I'm planning on doing a similar video, but from Franklin Park, with much more freight traffic and two metro lines worth of trains. But that's in the future. Until then, stay safe, don't make the engineer give you the angry horn, and thank you for watching the Northeastern Illinois Railfan YouTube channel.